merchants, if you look at China from the demand perspective, that you have to consider them. In terms of the incremental demand for solar and wind energy, China is the largest player. <laughs>We are here today in London at the Guinness Global Investor Conference and with me is Sharuk Malik from Guinness. Hi, thank you very much for having me here. Very excited to talk about China today. So you manage the China A-Shares Fund for Guinness and in China we're seeing a real crisis at the moment. How are you dealing with that situation? So we think yes, the real estate market is under pressure in China and equity market valuations do reflect this. We think that markets are really pricing in the worst for China. A lot of talk about the financial system uh, potentially collapsing. Uh, we think actually, if you present some numbers and do some tr stress tests, that actually the financial system should be able to weather the storm. Uh, we think investors don't really pay enough attention to China's rising capital buffers. So the capital adequacy ratio rising over the past 10 years, ready to absorb losses from the economic transition uh, that is going on in China. So we think markets are pricing in collapse for China. We think that is unlikely to happen. And that misprice represents an opportunity for investors, uh, really for any investors looking for high quality compounding companies in China. Now is a very interesting time to be looking at the market. So you talked about a lot of the issues. And when we sp speak to German investors, sometimes it seems like China is uninvestable for foreign investors. How do you deal with the lack of transparency and maybe the political issues you see there? Do you see the whole situation differently than the German investors? I would say so, yes. Uh, because I have been looking at Chinese shares for eight years now, uh, I've spent a lot of time looking at the China A shares in particular. So when we talk about transparency, there are different types of transparency. One is, of course, the language barrier. So I've been learning Mandarin for the past five and a half years, so I can understand uh, what is in the annual report. And then once you actually look in detail, you see the Chinese level of disclosure is much better than what it used to be. I think a lot of people's view of transparency for your average Chinese stock is very outdated. Uh, levels, of, levels of disclosure have improved. Uh, and for the most part, the Chinese disclosure levels are on par with uh, Western companies. So I think when you talk about transparency for the individual Chinese companies, uh, you have to make sure you have a very strict due diligence list. And that's what we have. So is that a language barri barrier? Is it better to be located in China or speak the, the language to be able to invest? I think the, the language capability is essential, but is not the only thing you need. A lot of people do like to see their fund managers based in China, but we think actually if you uh, look at the space, most of the Chinese fund managers are based in China and many of them underperform the market. So being based in China is, is not required to outperform. As you can see from the performance of our fund since we've been focusing on the structural growth uh, drivers in China, our risk adjusted returns look very good. What we actually think is very important in China is to have a strict due diligence process where you look into the integrity of management you look at what are the drivers behind the business, make sure there's a lot of work done on the accounting quality of the companies. And if you can go through all of these tests, you actually can find some very high quality compounding stocks in the A-share market. So you spoke about the banking sector and the real estate sector already. You are overweight in industrials and consumer discretionaries. Why in these sectors? So when we make our allocations in the fund, we make the final decisions based on a bottom-up basis. We do not make the top-down call saying we are going to be overweight to one particular sector or underweight to another. Uh, the sector allocations are a result of the bottom-up process driven by our due diligence uh, criteria. So as it happens, we do have the overweight in industrials. So some of the interesting exposures are to electric vehicles. So I think everyone knows the Chinese are very competitive across many parts of the electric vehicle supply chain. So we hold the component manufacturers. We think it's quite difficult to pick out which car manufacturers themselves will become the winners in the next five years. But we think the component manufacturers, they have competitive advantages which are easier to predict. So we have decent exposure to some of the EV supply chain names there. We also have some sustainability exposure. So one interesting company is called Nari Technology. China's building up its grid to accommodate all of the wind power, solar power, and so on. So much of this power is concentrated in areas in the west, whereas most of China's population lives in the urban areas on the east. So China does need to build up its grid. Nari Technology makes grid automation dispatching equipment, so it can benefit from the renewable build out there.
Another good example is in industrial automation where we hold in events, a very competitive Chinese firm who is moving up the value chain, increasingly competing with the Europeans such as ABB and Siemens. So those are the interesting areas in industrials. We also have an overweight in consumer discretionary, where as a result of China moving up the value chain, incomes will increase, people's disposable incomes uh, will rise. Uh, we think people will have more money to spend on leisure, so say traveling, whether that's internal traveling, whether that's going abroad, going through duty-free stores. We hold an interesting company called China Tourism there who can benefit from uh, greater uh, travel, both domestically and internationally. So companies that are really well known internationally are Alibaba and Tencent. As you focus on A shares, you are not able to invest in these companies. However, you do have 20% or more in tech stocks. What are the alternatives you're finding? So yes, it's very interesting. So the Tencent and the Alibabas and their competitors, they are listed in the offshore markets so are not available for a China A share fund to invest in. But we do think there is uh, a lot of opportunities and in information technology in the A share space. So one interesting area is the solar space. So a lot of companies with exposure to solar are classed as the information technology companies. So we hold companies such as Jingsheng, which makes uh, the crystal growing furnaces. Essentially, if you want to grow the silicon uh, to form your solar cells, 50% uh, market share for Jingsheng. So they make half of the solar capacity in China. We hold another company called Hangzhou First Applied Material. So for every solar cell, you need to encapsulate it and protect it from the weather and the elements. Hangzhou First Applied has about 50% of the market share in China. We also hold uh, consumer electronics exposure, where really it's a long-term play of China moving up the value chain, whether that's making uh, the printed circuit boards or making the consumer chips. Uh, we see these companies moving up the value chain, increasingly competing with their Western competitors. So we could say that China is one of the profiteers from a more sustainable world through their technologies? I think so, absolutely. I think if you look at China from the demand perspective, that you have to consider them. In terms of the incremental demand for solar and wind energy, China is the largest player. And if you look at the supply side, so who is actually making these solar cells, who is making the electric vehicles and all of the parts of the components, the Chinese are world-class now. Yes, 10 years ago, it was uh, because of cost, let's say, in the solar space, but now it's increasingly uh, because of the quality. I think people really do not understand, for example, with the electric vehicles, how the quality of the cars has improved. When I was in China earlier this year, I was using a lot of BYD taxis in Shenzhen. If you took off the label, you would be absolutely shocked it was a Chinese car. And I think mm -hmm. the average uh, European investor fails to appreciate uh, the extent to which the quality of the Chinese products has improved. So China is an interesting market for investors to look at and should not be neglected. Thank you much for your time, Sharuk. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.